Hello everyone and welcome to uh, my new series of Inkscape tutorials. Now I'm just going to say right off the bat that I am by no means a master of this program. I just know how to use it to get it to do what I need it to do. So first of all, when you first open the program, it's going to look something like this. It may or may not have this sidebar here, but we'll get to that later. So, by default, the tool that is selected is the Select and Transform tool. So, as with programs like Photoshop, all your tools are located here on the left. And obviously the Selection tool allows you to click and click and drag and multi-select. Pretty standard stuff. Now, to create an object, what you need to do is uh, there are a couple of tools that you can use. So basically, from here to here are your polygon tools. So you've got rectangle, circles and ellipses, stars and polygons, and 3D boxes. I've never used the 3D boxes myself, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty weird stuff. But uh, let's just go ahead and create a box. So down here we've got color swatches. Let's just make it red. And you can see up here, that's the color you've got selected for the fill. And it also shows up on the cursor. So if we just click and drag, then we can free to transform the size and shape. But if we hold down shift, it'll scale from the center where we first clicked, which uh, can be quite useful. And control can uh, help to lock the ratio between the height and width. And uh, shift and control does the combination of the two. So let's just make this about yay big. And now while we've got the rectangle tool selected still, you can see these three nodes at the corners. So these two square nodes just allow you to transform it. This round node changes the properties of the shape itself. So if we drag this down here, you can notice that the corners become rounded till it's down there and it's basically turned into an oval. So if we bring that up here, and I'll take this one, see that it instantly snaps back to here because the first time you grab it or apparently if you put it there it automatically scales both of them but you can scale them individually to get different looks so yeah it can be quite useful so we'll just put it there for now and now the tool that you're going to be using most often is the edit paths by nodes and what this is is essentially allowing you to go into the properties of the shape itself but in order to edit this uh, particular shape in more depth what we're going to have to do is go up to what I call the context bar and if I change my tool selection you'll notice that the tools up there change as well. So with the Edit Nodes tool, we can come up to here, Convert Selected Object to Path, click that, and it changes it from a rectangle to a simple path with a fill. Now, each one of these little squares is a node. So if we just zoom in here with the plus and minus keys, you can see that it's got this little handle on it. And what this is, is a Bezier control handle. So as you can see, as I move it in and out, it's changing the shape of the path. And uh, when I just went to the center there, it snapped in and also changed to a diamond. Now what the diamond means is that it's not locked in any way. So I can move it up, down, around, out, in, wherever I want. But the problem with that is, 
it creates a sharp corner as opposed to this where it's a smooth curve from the straight to the curve so the way we change that is again up in the context bar you've got these four controls up here so you've basically got corner smooth equal smooth which means if I take this click and drag the path itself to generate another node and I put it say there and then click the equal smooth actually we'll drag it out there so if we click equal smooth now both handles are going to remain an equal length in opposite directions which can create quite interesting shapes so let's go control Z oh, control shift Z one more time see how control Z is undo control shift Z is redo as in many other programs so if we have it on the corner like that and we hit smooth it'll just snap straight back now depending on how you've done things like say this is there and that is there just like them both it's smooth it'll snap them in to approximate what it was before whilst remaining smooth and also if uh, the node has two handles at different angles and you go smooth depending on the relationship it will uh, sort of split the, split the difference now with this particular tool again there's a couple of other buttons up here that you'll be using quite a bit so if we select these two nodes here as you can see there's a slight dip in here but we want it to be perfectly straight like the rest of the sides come up here to the make selected segments lines click that and it'll just make a line essentially it removes the handles and makes it perfectly straight so uh, really once you've got an object set to a path with the edit nodes tool you can do a lot of things so when you've got the hand icon you can grab and drag or you can double click and place a new node and then you can grab that node move it out For this particular one I'm going to set all these to corners so that when I drag the node in the middle it doesn't affect the curves there so I'm just gonna place a couple of more nodes there so that it just holds that shape I can bring this out and as I get to the edge of the screen, it'll start automatically scrolling, which is very helpful. So now we've got essentially a box with a tail. So let's jump down here to the uh, text tool here. And pretty much anyone can use this. So you've got your font size, your typeface, bold, italic, normal, whatever. This is going to set font 56 and type edit node tool. There we go. Make it bold, easier to see. Take it up to 144 and also set align center. Now back to the selection tool, we can move it around wherever we want. It's got these eight handles here. And again, just like when we were creating the rectangle, if we hold shift, it'll scale from the center. If we hold control, it'll scale uniformly. So we want to say about there. Now if you just click on whatever you have selected, It'll switch to rotation controls. So just grabbing it, rotates freely. Shift rotates around the opposite corner. And control snaps the angles. 
Now these four in the middle here, which are just the opposing arrows, they're your skew tools. And you can essentially use these to uh, give the effect that it's on an inclined surface. Which can be good if you're trying to do a uh, 3D model in Inkscape. Although, uh, from my personal experience, that's not entirely uh, easy to do. So we'll just set the fill of the rectangle to a 30% grey. And now, select the whole lot. Well, actually, let's do this up a bit. So selecting the uh, rectangle again, we uh, come down here to the Create and Edit Gradients tool, which essentially looks like a line with two nodes on it. Now, we just click and drag. Well, first of all, we want to come up to the context bar and set to Linear Gradient. It should be set to that by default, but I've been doing other things. So, click and drag, and we get a square node and a round node. And basically that means the start and end of the gradient. So we can move it around, make it look all pretty. Now by default, the first time you make a gradient, it'll be an opacity gradient. So if we look down here on the right hand sidebar, which if it's not there, you can get to the fill and stroke sidebar by clicking down here. It'll bring up your fill and stroke. So, we'll set it all to RGB. So if we click on this top node here, you can see the opacity is at 100% for a 30% grey colour. And this node is at 0% for the same colour. So, uh, that basically means it feeds to nothing. We don't want that. So, with this selected, we can either use the uh, palette down here, or the eyedrop tool, to grab a colour from somewhere else. Let's say 80% grey. And then move it around to get it looking how we want. And the best part about this particular tool is it can be combined with the uh, Edit Nodes tool to um, basically, you don't have to swap tools. Now if you are on the gradient tool, you can also add more stops. So now, I'm not changing the angle of the gradient, I'm just changing essentially the uh, ratio of it. And I can do crazy things like change the color of that entirely, and that looks entirely wrong. So, uh, you can do lots of awesome things with gradients. In fact, if you look at my DeviantArt on any of my uh, gun vectors, you'll see uh, quite extensive use of gradients. And also up in the context bar here, the program also stores all the gradients that you've made. Which for things like guns, which have a lot of repeating effects, you don't have to remake the gradient every single time. You can just come up here and select it. So, um, probably, probably should have led with this, but uh, the main thing about uh, vector graphics over non-vector graphics like PNGs or JPEGs is that even though I'm zooming in extremely far, it remains smooth. If you tried zooming in like that in Photoshop, like on a uh, rectangle that you've just made, it'll start looking very pixelated. The reason why vectors remain smooth is because of the way it calculates things. So, the computer basically knows the location and type of every single one of these nodes and its relationship with its neighbors, which are defined by these control handles. So, by using mathematics, it is, it's essentially able to calculate the arcs, and then it's just given a fill or a stroke value. So, I should probably uh, tell you the difference between fills and strokes. So fills are essentially that, the color that fills the object. Strokes 
are the color that um, surrounds it. So if we just switch, nope. All right then, that can play well with me. There we go. So you can't really see that. So over here in stroke style, you can control the stroke. So we'll just put the width out to eight pixels. There we go, now we can see it. And then you've got a whole bunch of other controls like the joints, the mitre limit, which is essentially this pointed corner here. Whoops. Helps if I actually select out of that. There we are. So this little corner here, where these two lines intersect, is called a mitre. So if I grab the Draw Bezier Curves tool, I can place a node there, and a node there, and a node there. Complete the line, bring it up to 10 pixels wide. So this corner here is called a mitre. So when I increase the angle, see it went away. Essentially what the miser is, is a uh, extrapolation of these two intersecting lines. So with the miser limit set to 4 as default, you can only calculate out so far, which is about there. But let's say we jack it out to, I don't know, 100? It'll start calculating out a lot further, unless you get a nice sharp corner and a much, much tighter angle. But then it starts to just look really weird, because essentially what it does is it draws out the corner to the uh, intersection point of these two lines. And at extremely low angles, you'll have an extremely long mitre. So, uh, for something like this, there are other techniques that you can use to get it looking right. But, we're not going into those just now. So, essentially, we've learned about selection tools, control tools, polygons, a little bit of bezier, and gradients. So now, you've made something and you want to export it. Now if you just go save as and set the file type to PNG and yes it's got a lot of different file types if you just save it as a PNG it will not have a transparent background which is for the most part what you want. You want a transparent background on things that you make in Inkscape. So, the way you do that is, first of all, you save it as a vector. So, default Inkscape SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. And we'll call this Edit Node Tool Tip. Save. So now, you can notice the page here. So if we were to go just save as PNG, it'll only show what of this is in this border. So if we select it all, come down to File, Document Properties, and come up with this little window here that you can't see in the recording. Fantastic. All right, there we go. So normally it comes up in an another window but I've just stuck it on the sidebar for the recording so it's got a lot of things here so you've got page, guides, grid, snap, color, whatever what we want is custom size resize page to content resize page to drawing or selection Beep, and then it does exactly what it says on the tin it reshapes the page to whatever we have selected. So now if we were to save this as a PNG, it will show the entire thing. We want a transparent background, so we have to export a PNG image. So we've got the export dialog here. So 
If you've got something selected, it will set to export area selection. Be wary. This can be quite a trap. I've fallen into this on multiple occasions and it is extremely annoying. Because if you don't catch that and you're really part of your thing selected, it will only export the area that you've got selected. So I like to just export the page once I've got it resized. You can also export the drawing which will export everything in the workspace. Or you can make a custom size using these values. So we'll just set to page. Then it gives you the image size here and the uh, dots per inch. So its default is 90, which is essentially what it draws out in program. But you can raise that to like say 200 and it essentially increases the resolution of whatever it is to make the dots per inch what you make it. We'll just keep it for 90 at, at 90 for now even. So we'll go export as and we'll throw this in here my rasters folder as edit node if I can even spell tooltip save and remember to actually hit export because just hitting save won't do that and there we go so now we've got it exported and uh, yeah, so basically what we've just done is made an infographic. And, uh, well, you guys will already have seen this because, well, it's in the video. And that's one of the main things that Inkscape is really excellent at, is creating these assets to be used in, like, post-production and editing. In my other videos, Every single title card or um, end credit that you've seen or pop up on the screen, I've done in this game. Every single one of my uh, things on DeviantArt, save a couple of photos, I have done in Inkscape. Everything from actual vectors, like ponies or guns, to uh, KSP image compilations. Because if we just create a square here, control D a couple of times to duplicate it. Well, I guess it won't work with here, but uh, well, yeah, let's bring in a couple of screenshots. So let's bring these in. So these are of my. Uh, recreation of the uh, firestorm from XCOM so you'll see it'll snap the corners so you can get them all in line like that then we can select these well let's actually get rid of that for now so we'll select these two and hold alt and hit the right key twice again hold alt down key twice so now these four images are now exactly the same distance apart and then what I would do if I was making a compilation for DeviantArt is I'll make a background hit page down to put that to the back drag that out here put in the title and then some descriptive text and there you go Bob's your uncle so I think this has gone on plenty long enough so, uh, I hope you guys found this tutorial informative and not too rambly. And uh, there will be more, at least a couple more, because this is barely even scratching the surface of what this program can do. So, uh, until next time, see you later.